recording? Okay. All right, so the purpose of today's lecture is to introduce you to Rails 5 API. Anybody want to take a wild guess as to what that means? <laughs> Before I start calling on you? Uh, Greg, what's, what do you think Rails 5 API means? That, that's, a, that's a really good guess. So in all, all an API, do, well, in, at least in the context of what we're talking about right now, APIs do what? What's an API do? I know it's Monday morning. Help me out, guys. Corey, what's an API do? Exactly. It serves us, an or, it serves us data that's organized in some certain way. Um, Rails is a nice uh, tool for, for firing up an API. And in fact, what, what I'm going to show you, my, my goal today is to show you that you actually know most of what I'm going to show you today. It's just a matter of uh, manipulating a, th a few things and a few, uh, providing a few tweaks. And bes besides a couple little tidbits, everything should look very, very familiar, which is why instead of something structured, I'm going to start from scratch using commands that you guys, uh, for the most part, will be very, very familiar with. So uh, again, I need some help. We're going to start with a blank uh, Rails project. Uh, anybody give me a, um, a domain? Think of a domain that we can use. I, I, all I need is something very simple with a few attributes and hopefully a has many relationship down the road. Anybody? Books. Books. Okay, so how are we going to fire up a new Rails app with, about books? What is it? New or G? Books. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, Rails 5 API. Okay, so now this is spinning up a new Rails app for me. And I'm going to, the only reason I'm doing what I'm about to do is, to, is for speed, for the purposes of speed, I'm going to use a scaffold generator um, because you guys, every, you have seen everything that this thing does. It's going to produce a lot of bloat, bloat code bloat that we don't need, but um, just for the purpose of getting things done. I'm going to say Rails, G, scaffold, and book, right, is, our, is what we're working with. So what do books have? Author, which is a string, title, can't type this morning, anything else? Pages, which would be like an integer, right? Cool. Everybody happy with that? Okay. Fire it up. All right, so this is, everybody should be very familiar and happy and comfortable right now. Does everyone feel that way? All we've done right now is spun up a Rails application. And what did I just call it? Uh, books. Okay. So now I'm inside of my books. I'm going to open this up and add them. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And this needs to be a little bigger for you. Does everybody read that? Or a little bigger, better? Bigger is better. Yeah. Thank you. Oops. This guy. All right. Now we really did just create some stuff. And actually, let's before we do before we go any further, let's just generate a couple of books. Um, Somebody give me a title. What is it? Dune. Dune? How do you spell that? Dune? Okay. Who wrote that? Franker? <laughs> like that? Frank Herbert. Okay. How many pages is it? Oh, it's like 700. 
Okay. Oh yeah, I've got to run them. Okay. What what am I missing, guys? <laughs> And honestly, I should be checking my migration files before I migrate, make sure everything looks good in there. But I'm just going to speed through that process right now. Okay, we've got a book. Let's put. Let's make uh, at least uh, one or two more. What's another good book? Who wrote that? You see EI or IE? Okay. And that's got a few less pages, right? A few more? <laughs> All right, so we've got two books. And honestly, for this, for our demonstration purposes, that's good enough for now. Um, so let's see, just double check. Oops, our book. Dot all. This should look familiar. Book dot count. So is everybody pretty happy right now? We're in Rails land. We're safe and sound. We don't. Nothing new is happening. Um, all right. The next thing I'm going to do is spin this up in a server, which is going to go to 3,000 for us. And everybody can read this okay. Um, and just just for familiarity, or just to, to make sure everybody's on the same page, when Rails generates a What should I see? Where should I go to to see anything? Okay. Cool. There's my books. Looks like I've got a show, edit, destroy page all already spun up for me. Super basic. That's what the scaffold generator gives you. So right now I'm in Rails action views, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is look at our. controllers that Rails gives us out of the box. And when you run a scaffold generator, it gives you, can anybody explain what's going on here? Or does anybody want to give it a shot? Take a wild guess. Feeling froggy? Erica, what do you think? Any guesses? Anybody want to guess what's going on in this block? What is, what's that? Um, well, it, yeah, that's true because because of lines like this, we're, we've created a book, and if it saves, we're redirecting to that book. Which this is just this part, this little bit of it is Rails that you're very familiar with. But there's something going on here, responsive format, and you notice that right now we either have format.html or format.json. Oh, whether you're in the browser or whether you're in Not exactly. This will both work in the browser. So what I'm going to show you is. Right now, what are we looking at? HTML or JSON? HTML. HTML. What you can do actually is just throw a .json extension on there and you actually see JSON data. Um, now, <laughs> um, now <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, now you could, you, that, <clears throat> the reason that this looks pretty is that I have a, um, I have a JSON parser uh, Chrome extension called JSON Formatter. Um, so I highly recommend that if you're looking at a bunch of APIs that you get something like that that can format your JSON and, and let it let you collapse it and expand it, things like that. Now this isn't what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you that when you see, uh, if you see this in code, that's all that's happening. It's saying if the browser is requesting HTML, I'm going to give it an HTML request. If it's requesting JSON, I'm going to give it a JSON. I'm going to respond with a JSON uh, rendering. Okay, that's all this means. So now what I'm going to do is hack away. And by hack, I don't mean like computer hack. I mean like chop, because I don't want all this stuff. And actually, what I'm going to do first, and if you guys could gasp like in response to the way you kind of did the, the aha before, that would be great. Because what I'm going to do is delete this entire views folder. 
that's pretty good. For a Monday morning, that wasn't battle taken. Okay? So the views are now gone. Now, what's going to happen now if I try and load this page? Nothing. It's fine because I have the .json in there. But what if I take it away? Now what's going to happen? You guys have all seen this error 27 bajillion times. Okay. Actually, maybe not this particular one, but what, whatever. It, we've, got, we've got problems. Now, what's going on here? Um, here's the index. What, what line is implicit in a Rails application? Like, what, line, what, what code exists secretly between lines 7 and 8? Render index. That's right. And what Rails does is that says, okay, I'm in the index. Here I am. I'm in an index method. Um, that must mean that unless I'm told to do something else, I should look in the views folder for an index. And any variables that we create in here will go with it to uh, render into the views index. Uh, sorry, index view. So what, we're, what, what we have to do, we're not going to do that anymore. Okay. And so instead, what I'm going to do is, is use a, um, I'm going to call the render method, and I'm going to pass in as JSON books. Okay? Does that make sense? Is everybody okay with this? Anybody have questions? Okay, and now we're back. So who, can, who wants to take a stab at what I would do for the show method? Somebody's going to get called on if nobody volunteers. Corey? Uh, you grab the specific book, right? Right, and because I used the scaffold generator, I've already got that happening. I've got my set book down here as a private method, and set book is being called before show. So just do JSON and then set book? No, set book is already getting called. So we already have, because of set book, we, we already have we already have we already have our book. Remember, because I've got my before action is firing because this is the show action and it's listed here. So set book is grabbing <coughs> the params ID and finding the book for me. Okay, so that's ha that's already there. That's it. Render JSON book. Okay. Now, what do you think I should do with this new guy? <gasps> okay. And we'll talk about why that's the case uh, in a little while. Um, same thing with edit. No response. Okay. You guys didn't. You guys didn't care too much about edit, huh? That's, that's all right. Um, create an update. Uh, we're going to trim down as well. And instead of now that we're not responding to format anymore, before we go any further, does any is anybody like super confused as to what the hell's going on? I, I don't quite understand the render JSON, like where that JSON piece goes. Okay, so JSON render JSON. This is stuff that comes baked in with Rails. You're familiar with the render method, right? Yeah. Okay, so render is saying, basically render is like, we're going to return some kind of data. Okay, it used to be like, what used to be implied would be something like render, actually you would have, um, it would send you to a page or some kind of file in your, um, in your application, and I'm just wondering where JSON Okay, so let's start from the first part. Is this this would be the implied line before, right? That we're used to. Okay, and this and what this does, this the render method has a bunch of has several different options, and if it gets the uh, the key that matches of the corresponding folder in the view, uh, the corresponding file in views, right? Then it's going to grab that uh, that erb template, and that's what it's going to display. That's what it's going to return. Okay. When we say render JSON, that's a key looking for a value, and what Rails is going to do is turn whatever is inside, whatever we're going to point to here in just a second, into JSON formatting. 
And if it can, it's going to do that. It's going to grab all that stuff. It's going to turn it into a big block of JSON. Um, and it's going to say, okay, wh whoever asked for this request, you're going to get a bunch of JSON. A bunch of JSON stuff. And, and it's not even going to look to views. It's just, that's right. And remember, does, does, the, does render change the URL that's showing in the browser? No. Okay, we don't, so this is not a redirect, this is a render, and that's what we're doing with JSON. So that'll come into play a, a little later on too. So with show, we just want to get a book and show it. Create, now this is a little bit, this is sort of the same and different as well. So we're still going to be passing in book params if we want to create a new book. And we still are going to check our, against our validations. In fact, let's toss some validations in there just for fun. What should a book always have? How am I going to write that? Validates title presence true. Good, great. Um, do we need to validate anything else? Are you guys happy with that? What's that? No, it can. This is what. So, so that's that's a good question. The, remember, we can create, if I, if I have no, if I don't put any validations in, we're just going to go back to validations here for a second. If I drop into my console and I say book.create with no validations, this is the third book, right? There's my third book. It's got an ID. Okay, it successfully was created. But the author's nil, the title's nil, the pages are nil. We don't want this. Good. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So let's um, book.last.destroy just so that we don't have that bad data in there. Cool. And I'm going to exit out of that guy. So I agree with George. Let's just validate it all. Validate title. And the nice thing is I can do this on one line, right? Author pages. Presence true. Everybody okay with this so far? Good? Everybody's happy with our validations? Um, there are books with, with uh, different titles, aren't there? I mean, different books with the same title. I know that because there's a Howard the Duck comic book, and there's also a Howard the Duck kids book. They have the same title, and they're totally different. Um, but we can do a uniqueness if you want. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to have a uniqueness on there. That we certainly would ordinarily have some kind of. It's a good point that besides, it's a it's very nice when you can have and you and we almost always do have a unique identifier that's not just the ID because the ID that lives in a database is very abstract. Nobody on the planet knows what an ID for anything is going is or is going to be when it goes into a database. But that's why a book would probably have something like an ISBN, which would be unique. Um, a user would have an email or a username that has to be unique, et cetera, et cetera. You guys get the point. All right, so where were we? We were in the controller, right? All right, so we we're continuing hacking up this controller. And all, I, all we're doing is changing it from Rails, look in the views folder, and render the appropriate view to Rails. All we want you to spit out is JSON data. Everybody okay with that? That's it. That's really the only thing that's happening here. So what do we want to get back if the book is successfully created? We like JSON. Oops, not like that. Okay, now here's another neat thing that Rails gives us. What should we get back if the book doesn't save? Yes, and because, thank the how do we get an error message from Rails? Okay, Flash has to do with if we were using the action views. So Flash would be, I have this views folder in here, which I don't have anymore, and I need to get a message from the controller to that view. We don't have that anymore. But what, what, kind, of, what kind of data is JSON? That's a trick question. It looks like, a ha I mean, yes, it's, the, the answer is it's JSON data. Um, it looks like a hash, though. There's, and so, in other words, my point is that we can insert all kinds of key value pairs into it. We can also take things that look like arrays, that look like hashes, and 
basically throw it in and, and our JSON will carry that with it. It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of like, why are we speaking English? Because we've all agreed to speak English and we all know how it's structured, right? It's a way that we can boil everything down and JSON beyond English is not a good example because English has ridiculous pronunciations and spellings and things like that, whereas JSON, you have a certain format you have to follow. Everybody's going to follow that, that, that structure and that way someone in, whether you're in France or the United States or wherever, if you format it in JSON, we can all get it in JSON and do something with it. Okay, it's like a, it's a uniform way of formatting data, right? Does anyone know what it stands for? So what do we want to do here? Render JSON what? So what do you what do you think we're going to do here? How about just dot errors for now? We'll, we'll stick. We'll start with this because we're going to add some things to this stuff as we go. Um, so who wants to take a crack at walking me through how I'm going to how I'm going to hack away at the update? Eric, what do you think? What am I going to do with line thirty-two? That's right. I'm going to delete the crap out of it. All right. How about lines thirty-three and? 36. All right. All right. If the book is updated, what do we want to show? Right? And how do we do that? Okay. That's, that's for French Rails. Uh, rails would understand that. It's, it's bilingual. It's cool like that. And then what do I, what I want to do if this update fails? Cool. Let's just try. Let's just go here. We're, we're starting simple. Um, same thing with destroy, which we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Um, I'm just going to say something stupid like that. Okay. Does it now? Does anyone uh, is does anyone not quite clear why we deleted the edit and the new? Say it again. So we're not interfacing through front end. We're not. Yes. Okay. We're not interfacing through. Front end on Rails. Yes. Thank you. We're not interfacing through the Rails view. So what 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 are edit and um, new? What do they give us, Sylvia? Yeah, okay, so a get request would, would, we would send a get request to the new or edit URLs, and what would we see typically on a new or an edit form? Uh, <laughs> what would we see once we've, once, we've, once we've gotten a new or an edit? What, what shows up on the page? A form. And so forms are front end stuff, and things like forms are in the future. Uh, for the most part, going to come in um, in, a diff in a different way than through the Rails views. Okay? So that's why we got rid of those guys. All right. Everybody feeling okay? All right. So what, what I'm going to do now is start making, well, what I'm going to do right now is check my notes. Okay? And... Yeah. Ah, perfect. Okay, so let's let's start with some. I'm going to open up Postman. Anybody not familiar with Postman? Everybody's happy with it. Anybody want to give it a quick description? Tim, what's that? Uh, <laughs> 
Sorry? Basically, Postman is just a, a is a tool that lets us make requests without a browser. It's just like a pretty display, right? It's like for the screens. And yeah, it's like it's like it's really it's a tool for developers to say, okay, are my routes working right? Is everything working right? Without dealing with a, a browser interface, does that make sense? So like I can set all the different types of requests I want. Like you can't go into your browser and just test a post request out of nowhere. You need to build a form, submit it, etc. With Postman, I can do that. Everybody okay with that? So, what? Who wants to see what first? What should we test out with our freshly running Rails API here? That's giving us JSON data about books. Get books. Get books. Okay, we couldn't find that one. Uh, what needs What needs to go in here is actually a full URL. Uh, and we are at, we're running on localhost 3000 in this case, and let's just check out books. What's going on? Cool. All right. Uh, so here's our JSON data. If I try and make it HTML, it tries to render something funky like that, but whatever. Okay, so I've got pretty JSON. I can turn it into raw as well. So you notice that the only difference here between pretty and raw um, is that raw is just sort of minified and squished together. Um, all right, so that's kind of boring though. But well, let's just check it out though. We can see that uh, if I check out just one book, so all so these up here on the top line, your get and then your uh, URL, this should look very familiar. This is just like um, when you're setting up your routes for with any other Rails application that you've done before. Cool? Okay, so now let's play with it. Let's get a little funky and let's try to make something. What kind of requests are we going to use to make something? A post request. What should we post to? Books. Cool. What happens if I hit send? What is this? It, okay. What in the world is this? There's a lot of stuff here. Anybody have any ideas? This is the edge of the matrix. So if, you're, if you see this and you know what it looks like just by looking at this, then you need to go talk to the Oracle and figure out what your future is. Uh, all this is, is, is what is this guy? Okay. We have an invalid authenticity token. Yeah. oh What are we going to do about that? Anybody know where this comes from? It's not strong params. That's a good guess, though. Uh, well, Rails, Rails gives us a, uh, a number of security features baked in, or at least a few. And one of them, if you go to the application controller, which you've all seen but probably never looked much into, or maybe some of you have, is protect from forgery. And this is going to require every uh, non-get request, I think, or you might have to look up exactly which ones. But um, put, patch, delete requests at least would all require, sorry, put, patch, post, and delete. We'll all require an authenticity token. And so what, what I'm going to do, at least for the purposes of right now, is say, uh, let's not do that for now. Okay. And so now I'm going to try and post to books. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. This is the kind of stuff you guys are look, used to seeing, right? We've got missing parameters and things like that. So with Postman, does anybody know how to use this tool, what I need to do? Yes, I'm going to put some uh, stuff in here. And actually, in order to give the JSON data properly, what I'm going to do is say raw, change this text to JSON. And now I'm going to really, what I'm going to do is write out my parameters hash. Okay, so now instead of Rails writing it for me, just write in here for Postman, I'm going to write it out. So JSON needs to be embedded within opening and closing brackets. And what do we need based on our strong params? Before author, books. Uh, book, book, yes. Cool, now I'm gonna have a book. And what do we have again? Author, who? Frank, 
we're making it, we're, we're, we're posting to books, so we're creating a new book, so I need a new author. Yeah. What? Sylvia Platt, is that what you said? I'm very sad right now. How do you spell Platt? P L A T H? I'm not. <laughs> I guess I'm not very well read. Uh, college was a long time ago. Um, and what's the title of a Sylvia Plath book? Sorry. The Bell Jar? What's a bell jar? <laughs> and anybody want to take a wild guess as to how many pages we have? 184. Buck 84, love it. Okay. We're going to send this request. Uh oh. What, this guy here? Bad string. Ah, what's that? Bad string. <laughs> Proper JSON formatting includes all of all means that all of our keys are also proper strings. So these strings were all bad. You can get away with you can get away without using the quotes uh, for keys and values inside of Ruby objects and JavaScript objects, but not when we're actually needing to. Um, pass along proper JSON formatting. Will it let me get away with the 184? Yes, but you can't Oh, more bad strings. Okay, now we should have good strings. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, what's our response? Two oh four no content. Hmm. Let's preview. And as you can see, our preview shows that nothing is coming back. So it looks like I never saved this. That's probably why, hopefully. So I'm just going to run that again. Syntax error. Okay, great. Unexpected keyword end. So somewhere when I hacked away down here, I deleted something. Uh, I'm sorry. 44. 44. Book dot destroy. Yes, thank you. This was responding to format. Awesome. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. If I turn it into pretty format, we see that, in fact, I've got my uh, object back. Now, all, besides displaying data, what is it? So an API couples with a database for what? What's the big P word that a, data, that a database accomplishes for us? Persistence. Persistence. That's right. OK, so on Friday, you guys were working on a bunch of front end stuff and I had a lot of really good questions about like, how do I keep track of this array of thingamajigs that I'm trying to display and deleting the right one and this, that, and the other thing. And the thing is that on the front end, we have this tiny little bit of memory that we're using to show what's going on, but persistence is, is, is accomplished by the back end, by the, by the database. And that's why we need something like a Rails API, for example. Um, Rails, Rails API wouldn't be the only way. There are lots of ways that we can uh, uh, develop a table and have a backend storing all that data for us. But that's all that's all we're really doing here is persisting data and um, allow and, and allowing us to perform the CRUD applications on that data, create, update, redestroy, and um, to control that data. Does that make sense? And finally. What we call data points are the places we go to get that data. So each data point we should expect to get a certain data back in a certain format. And once we know what that is, we can do anything we want with it. Okay. Is that what, what the endpoints refer to when you use the API? Yes. So an end. So this. So this is an endpoint. If you couple it with a GET request anyway, 
And that's a get, that, this is the endpoint that's, that, re, that, re, that refers to the books index. Okay, if I go to books2 and I send a get request, this endpoint shows me book with an ID number 2. Okay, so these are data, so that each data, each API endpoint has a responsibility to give a certain data in a certain format. Cool? Anybody have questions? Anybody awake? That is a good question. What book did we just create? Anybody want to take guesses? Bets? Anyone? Yes? Josh is, Josh is confident. Anybody want to go up against him? I wouldn't either. Damn it. <laughs> there it is. So yes, Andrew? Notice that we have good quotes, I mean uh, good strings, double quotes, proper formatting. So Rails does a better job than I do on the first shot anyway. Okay. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So let's see. Finally, let's send. All right. So let's go back to our controllers. Oh, I know what we could do. Um, Send a post request again, and we're going to get, oh yeah, this is still there. I just created a, a duplicate book. Okay, so here's our error message again. But what we could do, let's see, if I say, What I want to do is show you how we can pass along the errors back nicely. What's that? We didn't create a uniqueness validation. Seth was on to something there. Okay. What do you think is going to happen now? I've got the right parameter. I've got a book in there. Right? That's the only one that's required. Anybody want to guess? Let's try it. Uh oh. Is this going to let me create blank books? I'm honestly not sure. So this is discovery for us. Is you think that's going to rec is Rails going to have a problem with an empty string? Okay, cool. Rails did not like that. And look what it gave us back. Where's the, where's the ooing and aahing? Come on, guys. Isn't this awesome? Look at this. <laughs> okay, so, you know, can, can anybody, is anybody's mind kind of clicking? I don't know whose mind is actually turning right now, but can anybody think like, oh, this could be handy? Anyone? Yeah, okay, that's right. You could display the error message. That's right. Like, we just, we just, we, got, we, we fired this request off and it routed through the controller just like anything else. By the way, right now, just a quick peek at our routes. Uh, you know, all, nothing has changed here. What we're going to do in the future is we're going to namespace this. Does, there, does everybody remember namespacing or not? We're going to namespace this under an AP. We would do something like this. Okay, and then have resources books inside of it. Uh, I need to do an event, don't I? We would do something like that, and that, that'll give us an API namespace. Does that look familiar? Raise your hand if that's not familiar. Like, what, what is that? 
All right, names, all, all namespacing is doing is, is giving us just that. So in the URL, instead of localhost 3000 slash books, it would be localhost 3000 slash API slash books. And then most of the APIs that you've been sending requests to, like GitHub, et cetera, et cetera, somewhere in there, they're going to have a little, basically like a, uh, almost like a delimiter that says, okay, now you're entering the API world. Yeah. So you can Namespace is the is the Rails is the Rails method. Yep. And then, and then subsequently, you'd have your, in your controllers, you'd have your controllers nested under an API folder, you'd have your views. If you were going to use Rails views, you'd have those nested under an API folder as well. Does that make sense? So your nesting is kind of mimicked throughout. Um, so that's something you need to be aware of and you will be implementing. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep trucking, okay? Um, so what happened there was we tried to create a book. We hit the create route because that's the route that's, that's post books. And it created a new book. It hit this guy, book.save. Book.save failed. What, ha what happened there when book.save failed? Something very special happened in Rails land. Anybody? Didn't exactly return errors. What did it do? Remember that super special hash that Rails provides us? The errors hash? So that's this, this step on line 22. Um, Rails said, okay guys, what are we validating here? Title, author, pages, okay, cool. And it, all it got back was the legitimate page. It got an empty string for title and author and Rails says, nope, that's not legit. So it bounced back here to our controller. Uh, and, and before it did, it added the appropriate errors to the errors hash belonging to this book object. Is everybody cool with that? Remember from, from validations, that's what's going on behind the scenes. And so this failed, and therefore we were able to render the errors, and we got the errors back nicely in this format. Okay. Notice we now have... Um, all we have though is a, is a key of title and a key of author on our response. So there's a couple, there's a there's another way we could do this, and this is what I'm going to get into right now, is how can we change uh, this stuff to be even more useful? What might we want to pass along besides just the book if we successfully create a book? This goes back to somebody said something about Flash. What might be a nice thing to say? Yes, your book was successfully created. And so what I could do is say something, let's make a message key that says book successfully created. What would I want to say if it's not? Okay, but what, what, what's a good key that I should use? How about error? In fact, let's do, well, let's say... That's just a string. Error um, book not successfully. Everybody okay with that? Now, what else? We, what else might we want to pass along here? Does anybody remember anything about status codes? Status codes. Ring a bell. Anybody want to talk about status codes? I mean, you talk about them. Andrew, what's that site? It's uh, the oh, it's Oh, okay. HTTP actually is the. 
Okay. Now, so we can see uh, this gives us a nice visual, uh, helpful um, resource for what uh, what the different error messages are. Okay. So. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> nobody knows where he went. Um, so let's see. So what kind of error? would we want to give if the book was not successfully created? Basically, in, under what context would the book not be successfully created, first of all? Why would this fail? Bad input. Bad input, okay. So we could call it maybe a 400 bad, well, it's not bad request per se. Let's see, do they have like unprocessable entry or something like that? Not acceptable maybe? All right, so we'll we'll go we'll go with not not acceptable right now. So I could say something like uh, status. What was that? 502? 406. I'm really good at remembering numbers this morning. Okay. And by the way, if it was successfully created, what's a good status for that? Okay, we'll say 200 for now. So now let's let's uh, just for fun, really quickly, let's create a new book. What do we want the author to be? Dr. Seuss, good, okay. Now we're more along, uh, more along my signs. How about cat uh, in the app? And you, and you were trying to say I'm not a literary guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool, cat in the hat. And if you notice over here, I've got a 200 okay response. My little error mess, or my, uh, no error message. So let's let's again try and resend without an author, and let's see what we get. Where's my message? Okay, I got 406 not acceptable. That's good. Okay, I'm not sure why I didn't get my message back. Any help from the peanut gallery? Come back in the body. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, let's try this. What's that? Oh, uh, there we go. Cool. And now we see I've got a nice errors key. Okay. I've got a data key. So does the errors key get overwritten every time? So this errors key here is not the same as so. so okay. So I'm not sure if I understand your question right. This is book dot. This is book dot errors. This errors here belongs is coming from Active Record. Okay, this get, this comes from Rails. So um, that's where this guy came from. It supplied an author key and said the author can't be blank. I just decided to call this key errors also, and the reason will be that once we're working on the front end, we send a fetch request, and it comes back and it didn't work, one thing we can do to check and see what's going on is say something like response.errors now. Make sense? Uh, what do you think, Tim? Something more like that. So then, 
would you still make a differentiation between message and errors, or would you just call this message also? Because we can. Something like that, I think. Be legit. So now I've got a little success key in there. So the question is, what do you want to use to control? Um, what do you want to use as the controller to check for? So you, you know, I don't know if this is good convention or not, but you could throw a key in there like success. Okay, and if success is true, then you're going to continue on to do one thing. If it's success is false, then you're going to do something else. Okay. Is everybody feeling okay? Questions? What the heck's going on? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Tim. Yeah, shake it out, stretch, get some water, caffeine. So there's two more things, right? Which is um, yeah. cores. Yeah, get into cores and active model serializers. Yeah. Just displaying like, oh, we don't want to see when time was the last period you logged in. Right, exactly. When would you log in? We don't want to see passes. Just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you, you know, we can go about it as like, just only show the things that you need to use, basically. Um, so let's say like, at first we don't need the time, we'll never use that or whatever. And when we need it, we'll use it. So. Right. But this is good. Like, we can do it. It's clear so far. The taking out instead of just showing the whole thing back. It's slow. I'm gonna be <laughs> it's Monday morning. Morning. It's fine. Yeah, of course. You need to stand up and do five or ten jumping jacks, do it. You need to stretch, touch your toes, just to be able to meditate, bring yourself to life. Before noon, I'm on bed.
start with the room. Uh, she said, if we go into this and we have regular, uh, we have this namespace nonsense, and then we have our regular routes. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay, cool. Um, will it still allow us to have the normal routes? And the answer is yes. So if I just namespace, okay, and I clear this out and run Rails routes, um, we can see that it's just namespacing our routes for us to the correct controller action. Notice that the controller needs to be namespaced as well. See that? So this would need to these, this controller would, books would have to live under an API folder. Does that make sense? It gives us our, pre, our prefixes. Everybody okay with that? And then if I go ahead, I'm certainly allowed to, and in some cases it would be normal to, maybe not with an API so much, but in general, you can certainly just have your bare resources too, which live right on the root domain. And if I run rake routes now, you'll see that I have them all. Make sense? See all that? Cool? Good? Okay, let's go back. I'm just going to keep it sort of normal for now. Figure this out. Um, all right. So now what we want to do, what I want to do is show, what I want to show you, I should say, is if I go to localhost 3000, and I go to my books, what am I going to see? JSON. Yeah. Because that's what I'm rendering. And because I have this nifty uh, Chrome extension, I see JSON formatted nicely. Okay, so here are all my books. Looks like right now I have seven books. Actually, I only have three books, but since I didn't put, uh, um, since I didn't take heed of Seth's recommendation, we have three Sylvia Plath the Bell Jar books. Okay. Oh, I. So while you guys were gone, I threw in a password. So I don't know. I'm not sure why books would have a password, but it's for demonstration purposes. You'll, you'll see in a minute. Um, What's that? It didn't. Can anyone answer Eric's question? Anyone with a sharp Monday morning memory? I delete, remember, I destroyed my nil books, yep. And so that's why I say like, you know, the IDs are so arbitrary in databases that it's good to have a sort of a more human readable or a, a, an easier reference number or identifier that's unique besides just an ID, which most things will have. Okay, so. Let's see. OK, how could I send a request from this page to my API, like a put or a patch request? Is there a way to do it? Anybody? All right, fetch. Where am I fetching to? What's that? Okay. Yes, but I need the full address, so I'm going to go ahead and write it in. HTTP slash slash localhost 3000 books. Okay. And now what? Yeah, Tim. Better? Cool. Okay, what's going to happen if I hit enter right now? Who's, somebody said it. I think it was George. I get a promise. That's nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, do I? What can I do with that? Who remembers um, what we do? With, what we can do with promises? What is a promise? Like, what are we going to do with this thing? What? There we go. We got to change some dot dens. Why? What's going? What? What kind of action is happening here? Async. Okay. Asynchronous action, which means something's going on in the background. It's going to take a little bit of time. If this is a slow API, it could take seconds or longer. Okay. If it's quick, it's going to be microseconds. But it's still sort of throws off the order of code as we know it. Right? It's no longer procedural A to B, or A to Z, or whatever. Good question. 
Anybody? I think the default's get, right? And then once it becomes a get, you know, they give you an option to actually do that. I think that's right. And I mean, it seems like we've got a promise. Let's see what this thing is. So like, how can we get into this? How can we crack into this promise? This is a little bit of review, right? Not then what? Uh, response. response. What do we want to do with that response usually, or a lot of times anyway? Do I need to invoke this? OK. Now what? Should I just hit Enter? Why not? Another promise. Man, these promises. OK, so now what should I do? Yeah. So you want me to, so what, can I, what should I put here? Jason, OK. Why am I calling this Jason? Right, can I call it, wait, throw back to uh, mod 2 here. Can I call it beef? OK. And what happens if I console.log beef? Does anybody expect to see anything? Yeah? All right. You guys are, uh, oh, how about that? So there it is. So now we have this, um, in other words, when this promise executes, uh, then we can actually see finally what, what it is we want to see. Why is it showing you the first promise? Is that from the first thing? No, okay, let's watch that again. Oh, you, mean, you, mean talking about right before the you mean this guy here? Yeah. And sometimes you'll see things like this along those lines. This is kind of a side note. Like, if, le if x is salad, what am I, what's my, what am I going to see on that line, John? Do you know? How come? You're exactly right. Okay. In the discussion questions on where it says prevent beef equals console log of beef, they just had console log of any column in there. And that works too. So, so, so if you go there, so if you, if you take out everything inside the Like this? And, and when you're using a dot then, the, the uh, can I say the implied argument? Is that a good word? The, the argument that you're going to get automatically is the return value of the previous promise or the previous execution. Is that fair enough to say? Okay. So this, yeah, don't be, don't be fooled. This is nothing more than a callback function. I could just as easily say something like then function response no. okay everybody okay with what I just did do I then oh I need yeah thank you and I need to put the one I just took out back, right? Okay, is it? Now is everybody okay with it? Same thing? So all I did, this is, this is just arrow function notation. This is uh, old-fashioned standard function declaration notation. Okay? Yep. So how do you actually return a map? Like, uh, for some reason, it just seems like in my head, like, how would you actually So how, so in other words, you're saying like, I want to get, 
Book number two into its own variable? Yeah. That's a good question. Anybody have anybody have any thoughts? So what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, um, let's have variable and just catch in the sketch. So here? Is this what you mean? Uh, okay, and then uh, do I what do I do? Do I want me to get rid of this? What am I going to get back here? Hmm. Yeah? Uh, so we just have to make sure that everything is executed inside the promise, right? Whether we define the function outside the promise or not. Hmm. Execute it within like a class or anything. So I'm not sure if I understand your question. We want to grab a certain book. In the promise? Yeah, like within the dot Like within the fetch, I should say, sorry. Like when we did with that, that would be able to just pull up JSON and run <coughs> The question was how can we get a certain, like a certain book, for example, that has to be done within the dot to execute certain functions? Can you start by saying within the fetch? Yeah, well, so I think the answer to your question is yes. I mean, we need. We need this stuff to resolve down to usable data and rather than a promise, because you can't just grab value out of a promise. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so we have to do it within the promise or within the promise. So let's, let's just see. Like, who has some ideas? How are we going to – suppose I wanted to grab book um, uh, uh, Dune. How, about I, how am I going to assign that to a variable? Well, how would you assign this whole thing? That, that would be a great first step in my mind. Okay. Pull it from that, you would have this object that you have in reference. Okay. How would we do that? Any guesses? Object JSON, set JSON to a function, and that function is executed. Okay. 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 Like that? It doesn't work. My thing, that, my thing is that the variable should be declared inside of the anonymous function that we just discussed. Like books, arrow, and then the anonymous function. You know, within that anonymous So you want to make a function in here? Okay. No arguments. Oops. Is this what you want me to do? And what should I assign it to? Try this. What, what's, what's, I was going to say, what's one of the what's one of the problems here that we're running into? Okay. You think this is going to something more like this? What's that? What's the anonymous function? I don't know. We're just we're just we're in a little playground here. We're trying to figure out so we're trying to figure out how we can capture this data. It's coming in. We know that we see it. It's like on the tip of our radar. It's on the horizon. It's like the little the, the dragon you're chasing, and it's like how do I capture that thing? Because we're going to need to be able to. Should we should like map through the books and then just 
All right, so what do we want to call this function? Okay. Get books. Do I want to pass? Let me think. What do, we, do we want to try first by trying to grab them all? Get books. And no arguments? Yeah. Or I could pass it. I guess you can pass it in books. Let's pass it some books. What do you want to do inside of this? How are we looking? Something like that? Yeah. What do we think? Nice job. That's exactly it. So so this is, this is going to be the common pattern, or a common pattern. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to place a callback. Uh, we're actually going to invoke a, a function. There might be time when you would, you would say, I'm just trying to use terminology right. Would you, you, we, could, we could say we could call a callback function in here, but right now I'm just, I've declared a function and I'm invoking it here. I'm passing in this response, uh, this, this response um, object, books, at this point in time is now, it's still a promise, but it's going to end up being an array of books that I'm now passing into this get books. All get books does is assigns it into this variable that's, that, to which it has uh, scoped access. And now I have an honest to goodness object that I can use, okay? To do stuff. Yes. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> like, is there a better way? That's ugly. <laughs> um. No. This is the no, way. This is. This is. So so is there a better way? Is that a question, Tim? What's going on? What's going on there? What's that? Does that make sense? Mm 
What else? I mean, I'm kind of going to throw it back to you. What else could we do here? <laughs> we are the pioneers. We must solve this issue. Um, uh, it's, it's basically going to be you're going to end up kind of with the same thing going on. Make sense? Like, there's no advantage there. You mean like? What we did before. If I said something like books one, like this, yeah, we still we still have the promise, which isn't something we can really do much with, right? Well, why didn't you why not? What's that? Because let's see, you don't. You mean add another chain, another dot then on here? Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought here. Tim, what would you say the next step here is? To do what? To break the cycle of promises. To break the cycle of promises. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like that sounds like an '80s uh, ballad. <laughs> <laughs> I could see a big I could see a big hair big hair band singing break, break the cycle of promises. Um, Tim, I'm looking for a nudge in the right direction here. Where do where, where you want me to lead? Right after, like, especially if 
So, so in other words, whatever. See if see if I've got if I if I'm doing any better explaining this, like the the sort of our final function in our last dot then needs to take that data and do with it what we want without some other sort of without some other um, outside action trying to rely on that data. Is that is that, is that it? so like? What, what we see here on console.log all books, all books we've assigned to a, to, a, to a variable that's now available to us. The reason we don't do it that way, so like this is demonstration, like this was like an aha moment. Well, okay, we figure out, we figure out how to get it. But the reason we're not going to put that into a, a variable and then call it elsewhere in this, in this manner is it might still be a, a pending promise. And now we're going to throw an error or get an undefined. So what this, so what our function needs to do, sort of our final callback within our last dot then is going to be the function that takes that information, it's actually going to have that information because it's not going to execute until that then is done and do whatever it is we need to do with it. Does that help? Make sense? So basically what we're going to end, where we're going to end our, our dot thens is some function that's going to do something with our data. <laughs> that is proper function uh, naming, by the way. Take notes, okay? Does that make sense? So basically, our, we're going to chain our dot thens and we're going to finally do something, okay? Down here, down here. All right. Um, you're, you're having finite endpoints. There's an endpoint. We're gonna we're done with the promise. Is it one of those if you want it, set it free, and then it'll come back to you? Like we'll use you later, promise, and we need to do another data call. Um, or what's the C to D thing? Like okay. I can't think that is like a right, let's see. Okay, so what I just did was I defined a function here called log and append data, and this is contrived, but also very much what you're going what you're going to be doing, even though obviously you're not going to make it look like object, 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 object. But um, does everybody see what happened here? I made this function called log and append data. It receives some data. It console.logs it, which is this guy, and it document dot writes it which just which which takes our document that was showing and gives it all the stuff now this is obviously I would want to I don't want a bunch of object stuff so I could say um, 
I could do something else like, okay, let, let's actually think about this for a minute. What does this object look like? It's an ob it's an it's it's an array of objects with a key as the index, right? That makes sense. So, like, let's see what we could do. What could let's let's like try and write something together. Like, what could what would you want to do with something like this? Okay. So, like, what do you want to what do you, what, what what would we like to do with this data? What's something that we could do? Show all titles. I love it. Okay, and it's what's it going to take? Book array. Okay, we'll call it that. And what do you want to do? Okay, how do I do that? Okay, how do I do this? What do you guys think? <coughs> like this? Does that look better? Like so? What's that? Well, we don't have to be on multiple lines here. It would return it automatically, actually. I like console outline is fine. You want to show the return values? That's fine too. Uh, what's my what's what's going on here? Okay. What do we call this? Hmm. Yeah, we were hoping to see the return array there, right? But it didn't work. So let's let's try it again, but this time we'll actually do something more like we want to try document dot write. Is our syntax still okay? Let's give it a shot here. Show all titles too. Always all sequels are better than the first ones. Something happened. 
What do you guys think? Eh? Huh? Eh? That's it. It's like, we just built a sweet application. Do you see where this is going, though? Okay? Like, we're able to now, behind the scenes, extract data from our API and do something with it and manipulate the DAW. That's like, that's pretty much it. Like, that's what a website, that's what a single page app is going to do. Right? Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Okay. I need to get into it. Okay, so is everybody kind of okay at least with what's going on right here? So I'm really going over on it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So now, what's going to happen when I try and run this now? Dun, dun, dun. All right, Chris thinks it won't work. Everyone else is like, this lecture is way too long. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> uh -oh. What happened? This is a long error. Failed to load HTTP local close request, blah, blah, blah. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. What does that mean? Anybody? Anybody want to guess? What's different now than, what's, than it was before? The URL. What about it? I changed it to about blank, and I tried to make a request to localhost 3000. So before I was in the localhost 3000 domain, and now I'm not. So now what we have is one location trying to call another, one domain, trying to make a fetch request to another domain. And Rails is like, uh, uh, uh. okay, and that's a safety mechanism. And what you're going to have to do as you're setting up an API you decide who is allowed to reach into your API and make requests, um, whether it's get requests or other, other, other kind of requests. With Rails, uh, what we can do, and with a few short Googles, you could find this rather easily. Um, we could step into our config, application.rb, and we have this, oops, we have this class application here, and we've got some uh, defaults going on in here. One of the things we can do is config.actiondispatch.defaultheaders. And basically what this is saying is we're going to allow requests to come from anywhere. That's not really a great idea maybe um, in general, but, what, but at least um, you'll get the idea that, that this is a cross-origin reference error, and this is how we're going to fix it. We're going to, we're going to tell our API what it's allowed to give data to. No, you will, but there's, but the ways you're going to do, you won't, what you won't probably do is say, let anybody in. Yeah, but then like, can we, will we be doing some sort of authentication where like, we have that password field? Right, we'll get it, yeah, yes. So, you're getting, we're getting a little bit ahead, we will, you will, and, and what you're start to, what you're going to start to be doing is handling some authentication on the front end, and then handling, but but still handling database um, sanitation on the back end as well. Okay, so now if I, I think I have to restart the, let's see, well, let's just find out. If I try and make that request again, it still fails. I think, hopefully, if I restart my server and I go back, I'm still at about blank. I'm going to try and make the same request, and now, oh, and I, since I've refreshed, I'd have to refresh, rewrite show all titles, and now if I call it, yeah. So that's that's a that's a that's a cross origin reference error, cross origin resource error. And do I need to see to cut it, or should I get into it? Okay. Sorry guys, that went a little longer than I, uh, I wanted it to. Um, but at least, uh, 
in spite of the fact that it's Monday morning, this is a very, very exciting part where now you have tools to manipulate and persist data on a back end. And I should say persist data and um, execute CRUD functions on data on the back end and display it and manipulate that data on the front end. This is like a big, huge step. And where we're going with this is that persistent data lives in the API, but we're also going to have to keep track of like a little temporary um, uh, uh, representation of data even as it changes on the front end, which is what, we're, and we're gonna start by doing what you all are familiar with already. And then as we go further, we'll incorporate some new tools to do that as well. All right, sorry for the length, but uh, that's it for now.